Hi again, so welcome to how to troubleshoot the short circuit in a failed motherboard. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn in detail how to troubleshoot any kind of short circuit in any kind of motherboard. So let's get started. But please, before diving into this tutorial, make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell icon because I can only help you if you are subscribed to be notified for future videos like this one and please don't forget to like the video and share the video and join me in my Patreon page you will find of course this schematic in my Patreon page you can download it and download many many other schematic and of course you can ask me there if you want any schematic I can upload it for you for free if you are subscribed thank you very much and let's get started so now we gonna discuss how to troubleshoot the short circuit in every motherboard please pay attention this is one of the most important tutorial in my channel where i will teach you about the short circuit you know what the short circuit is very easy to isolate for me, I consider that the short circuit is one of the most easiest failure in any failed motherboard. And as I told you before, you can give me any failed motherboard, any shorted motherboard, give me 10 seconds and I will spot the short circuit for you. So please stay tuned because I'm going to share with you very important tips and secrets on how to troubleshoot short circuit efficiently so let's get started so first let's take an overview a look to this power sequence this power sequence basically is for the hp laptop 1000 but always the same working okay, is always the same don't worry about the type of laptop or computer if you understand one power sequence or one uh, system power you can understand of course and analyze any other power sequence so first before diving into how to troubleshoot the short circuit let's take a look to this power sequence and see an overview basically here this line here means here we have the outside world where we have the ac adapter or the charger and the battery and here basically this is the motherboard okay so this is the motherboard so for beginners of course all these squares are rectangular are controller when you hear controller means ic or integrated circuit okay so control means ic so the small squares and rectangular here are basically mosfets like those mosfets and switches and those basically are ICs, control ICs. So here we have the IC, we have the battery. So the motherboard could be working using the charger or the EC adapter or the battery. So we have the EC adapter channel, we have its switch or MOSFET, and we have the battery, as you can see, channel and its MOSFET or switch, okay? And of course here, this is the charge circuit bq 24 728 this is the responsible of managing all power here in the charge circuit okay so and here as you can see this is basically the main integrated circuit or the main control ICs that will be responsible of generating all powers in the motherboard for example here we have the 5 volt 3.3 volt ic it has the purpose of generating as you can see here 5 volt always and 3 volt always of course after receiving here we have the v but the 19 volt from the ec or from the battery okay so this one also this is the ic that is responsible for generating as you can see here 1.5 volt for the ram the ram here is the ddr3 that's why the voltage is 1.5 volt so if we go back for example let's check the ram as you can see here in the block diagram we have ddr3 ram okay that's why we have here 
1.5 volts for the run because the DDR1 has 2.5 volts as our working voltage, DDR2 1.8 volt and DDR3 1.5 volt and of course DDR4 1.2 volt DDR5 1.1 volt okay we have here another IC this is basically the IC that generate the VCCP always 1.05 volt is the VCCP this voltage is generated for graphic card for PCH as you can see here we have PCH PCH means the graphic card integrated with the search bridge we have the CPU and we have the GPU okay so this is the voltage basically for chipsets okay then we have here another voltage this is the V core this basically is for the processor this one also is for the processor and chipset and this one is for the graphic card here please i have a tip that i will i want to share with you so uh, here you see those voltages basically here are a secondary voltage okay this is basically secondary voltage over here so this is basically secondary voltage so th those voltages are generated after are generated based on some main voltages means this ic this is the main over here we have main control ic's and here we have secondary basically control so this ic for example 5 volt 3.3 volt will generate 5 volt and 3 volt okay and based on these two voltages we will get other voltages here for example we will get 1.1 volt etc okay so what i want to see for you is if you didn't get any voltage here you should go back okay in this direction as you can see and check other ic's the main ic check the dc battery or the ec adapter is it good or not and also the charge ic so let's see how to troubleshoot basically the short circuit within this motherboard and of course this tutorial will be basically a reference for you so in every laptop as you can see here in the image we have pads the pads as you can see here this is pad this is another pad pad everywhere in every circuit you will find pads basically we called it also power pad or test point or bridges so this bridge is basically we use it to isolate one circuit from another circuit and then to isolate the short circuit so I will explain you very easily let's assume for example that we have a short circuit here as you can see for example in this circuit we have a short circuit here in 5 volt 3.3 volt circuit okay we have a short circuit everywhere here so how can we know if the short circuit is in this IC in this MOSFET in this IC or this IC because all these components are connected together so the short circuit it will be difficult to, to spot the short circuit and to isolate the short circuit that's why we use these pads to isolate one circuit from another because if for example the IC is shorted you will find also the short circuit here in this path and also here in this part but for example let's assume that this as you can see here this ic is the shorted ic so let's remove this so let's assume that this is so excuse me so this is for example the shorted ic this is the shorted ic so but because as you can see here all these components are connected you can even find the short circuit here or here or here or everywhere in the motherboard so what we should do first we can for example remove this part this part 
could be removed using the iron. You can desolder the soldering hair and uh, remove the bridge here. So now this part here is isolated from this part. And then we can check this point and this point. For example, if we put the red probe here, the short will be disappear. Means here we don't have short circuit here. Means short, short circuit is in this part. But it could be also in this MOSFET. So we should also remove this part, the second part. And then if we check this point, here we the short circuit will be disappear and here we will get the short circuit so the short circuit also could be in this shape section because here we have other component so then we can remove this part and check this point at this point if we check this one the short circuit will be disappear and here we will get the short circuit means this is the problem Okay, this is just an example. I will give you another example. For example, we have the short circuit here in the main power. So in all these pads, if for example, there's a short circuit something somewhere here, you will find hair short circuit, hair short circuit, hair short circuit, hair also short circuit, you will find this MOSFET hair short circuit, everywhere you will find sh short circuit. So. In uh, this case, if you have a problem with a short circuit in any circuit here, you can, of course, desolder or remove these pads here. Okay. When you remove these pads and then check this point. If, for example, the short circuit is in this circuit, you will find this point is short circuit. But this one, no. This one, no. This one, no. Because you remove these parts. So this is basically how I hope that you understand a little bit how to isolate the short circuit and of course uh, as I told you before I can spot the short circuit in 10 seconds the circuit here is using the inductors so let me show you a circuit here in order to uh, to make it easy for you okay so I use the inductors here for example as you can see we have inductor here do you see this is inductor basically and over here we have the inductor so if you focus here this is inductor is connected to this electrolytic capacitor and connected to this resistor and serum capacitors and Always the inductor you will find it in the power rail as you can see. This one also the same in the power rail. If we go to another circuit here as you can see we have this inductor for example. It is always connected to the power rail or to the high path. You can never find an inductor connected to the ground. So that's why I use is the inductors as a secret to detect the short circuit easily. Using the multimeter, put the black probe in the ground everywhere in any ground in the motherboard and then in the main ground of course and then use the red probe and check all inductors in the motherboard. You can check it fastly. So use the 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 red probe from one inductor to another to another to another until you get uh, so the inductor where we have the short circuit means the inductor that belongs to the circuit where we have the short circuit you will find a low resistance or a low reading and of course you will hear a buzzer or a continuity in the multimeter so uh, I already made uh, many videos about how to spot the short circuit you can just go to the home to the home page and in the videos you will find the search box uh, right in the search box short circuit and you you will of course or you will see all videos will 
we we cause a explain the short circuits and how to isolate and detect the short circuit so in this video i hope that you understand a little bit how to use these parts to detect the short circuit so these parts here are made of course for testing the voltages example how we test the voltages for example here uh, this IC will generate 1.8 volt. You can test it here in this part. Okay. For example, this IC will generate another voltage. You can test it in this part over here. Okay. So the th the 5 volt you will test it here in this part or this part. The 3.3 volt you can take measurement here in this part. Okay. Avoid to take measurement above the IC in order to avoid uh, short circuits, of course. So I hope that you understand a little bit. Please, if you have any question, put it in the comment below. And please don't forget to like the video because your likes really motivate me to create more and more videos for you in a daily basis and share the video with other people like you. And please join me in my Patreon page where you can download a lot of laptop schematics and of course enjoy a very unique and exclusive content thank you very much and see you in the next video